development of uh, GRC tools or digital tools for bank? Yeah, um, well, I think uh, uh, really around this GRC technology uh, really started, I think, 20 years ago. Um, and in, in that first five to 10 years, organizations really adapted these technology solutions as, as more as a repository to document you know, your risk information, the role effectiveness, um, but it, it wasn't really used throughout the organization. Um, also because the, the solutions could not offer uh, that integrated view and, and you know, having a workflow would probably be possible, but um, it wasn't adopted throughout the organization. So it was really used as a repository. And the last few years you see developments that um, they're offering an integrated solution. So last, I think, 10 years, uh, uh, organizations really started to use these solutions to integrate frameworks, um, to, to go away from a siloed perspective on, on risk and compliance. Um, and um, so the organizations that, that implement it today are really looking to, to uh, do just like that, you know, having a holistic view of risk management. Um, and where, we, where are we heading? Um, in my view, we're heading to an integrated solution, which not only integrates your frameworks or your processes in the organization, but also connecting to uh, external data sources. Uh, often rec tech solutions are, are adopted and connected to these uh, GRC technology. Um, and not only uh, from a silo perspective, but more integrated in the, uh, in the entire uh, uh, dashboards that, that are being provided at the moment. Um, and it all to the benefit of the decision making throughout throughout the organization from top to bottom um, because it's all about you know making informed decisions on a timely manner. It is, it is. And that uh, requires a good good oversight. And um, how common is it to, to apply tools for for operating business? That's a good question. I see differences. Uh, I see definitely definitely differences here. Um, some organizations, smaller organizations, so um, and smaller I mean tier two um, uh, banks and, uh, and insurance companies, they um, you know often thrive by simplicity. So you know working with an Excel tool or, or uh, similar uh, uh, tools could easily work. Um, but you see uh, that regulatory complexity increases, and then Excel is has its limitations. Um, and also from a, from a supervisory expectation point of view, you know, it's difficult to document all your decisions made uh, in, that, in, the, in, in developing a model for, uh, for op-risk. You know, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to, to have really um, uh, you know, develop that audit trail. Um, so I see differences in, in application and um, uh, as, you know, more and more organizations do see the need to automate. Because also, as I mentioned, you know, the resources are getting scarce uh, and are need to be utilized in an effective and efficient manner. Um, and Excel and, and similar uh, yeah, paper solutions are uh, have, have their limitations in what they can offer uh, and what insight. Yeah, and I guess also in the, in the sense of uh, risk management, uh, it's even more demanding to understand impact on the business as well when you have either external events or internal events. How could a tool support yeah. that? Well, to the tools nowadays also include uh, often financial information, not only your risk information but also your financial information. Uh, well, and if you have a tool which doesn't include financial information, you should go and, and go out to, to look at for different solutions or uh, ask for uh, for in, in, to integrate that. Um, so I think that's definitely key to have that insight uh, and to make the connection of the impact of your uh, internal uh, incidents and external incidents on the processes that you're monitoring. Yeah, it's a good tip. Um, thank you so much, uh, Daniel. Yeah, you're and welcome. Thank you. <laughs>